When the southern kingdom of Judah refused to repent, her fate was sealed and judgment was coming. But Jeremiah saw future restoration and a new covenant coming up next on Our Jewish Roots. In the sixth century BC, one man stood alone against the pervading wickedness of God's people in the land of Judah. The prophet Jeremiah was chosen by the Lord to warn of pending judgment that would come at the hands of the Babylonians. Visions of an exile left him heartbroken and in tears. But Jeremiah remained faithful to his calling and recorded a message that would speak to generations yet to come. Standing tall with faith in God, he understood better days were coming. And there was hope over the horizon. We're so glad you've joined us today. I am David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. Jeffrey Seif. You look really nice today <laughs> in the suit and tie. Who I are you? I decided to bump it up a little bit, personally. <laughs> I really Pastoral did. role it looks like today for you. Yeah, it's great. Even aside from the set here, I decided to. I feel underdressed. Uh -huh. well, we noticed Please. you look great. Yes, well, you're kind. Thank you. Okay, we're in our 43rd year of ministry. Yes. In this place, and this is the first time that Jeremiah has been brought up. I wonder why it's taken so long to talk about Jeremiah. Any, well, when, any I, when I see him in heaven, he might raise the same question. <laughs> yeah. But I thought it was apropos, and our producer Ken Berg did as well. Jeremiah's world in so many ways was so like our own. The political situation was really precarious. The religious condition in the political situation was really not what it needed to be. And into that world came a prophetic voice. We thought we might learn something by examining what he had to say. I have a lot of feelings in my heart for Jeremiah. He was called young. He had this message that was burning inside of him and he had to get it out. God said, you're not gonna marry. His family left him, but still he pressed on even with a message that was horrible for everyone to hear. No one wanted to hear what he had to say. And I agree, even beyond the message itself, to consider the messenger to your point, uh, there is something to be said about toughening up and pressing in and enduring. And I think we all need to do that. And he's an example of that, to your point. We're excited for the whole series. Me Looking too. Looking forward to it. Dr. Seif, we're going to hear more from you in a bit. But right now, let's hear more of Jeremiah's story. It's been a long, dark period in the history of Judah. For years, the prophet Jeremiah and his scribe Baruch have faithfully recorded the words of the Lord. Sadly, the message of pending judgment has been ignored. Jeremiah is left wondering why. Why have the hearts of God's people turned to stone? <laughs> אני עדיין זוכר את חזון הסיר הנפוח. למרות כל השנים שעברו, הסיר הנפוח שנשפך על יהודה, זאת הייתה הפעם הראשונה שהבנתי שאדוני עומד לשפוך את חמתו ומשפטו על יהודה. הם הקטירו קטורת לאלים אחרים. הם השתחוו לאלילים. מה עשה ידיהם? ברוך ליבי דואב עבור יהודה. 
השתחוות לאלילים אחרים. מבחיל. הסבנו עורף לאדוני. משפטו קרב ובא. עד אז אשמיע כל מצוקה בשופר. כך היה וכך יהיה. I grew up in a German Jewish world. My own family, the neighborhood I lived in, was constituted by people that just got out of the Holocaust. Yiddish uh, was a common language. Yiddish is, a, is a, like a European Hebrew dialect. I used to hear words kicked around like oi, which means oh or woe, or oi vez mir, woe was me, or oi gewalt, oh, violence. And of course, the world where I fare from, people were reflecting to a certain extent on the violence that they had escaped, Nazi Germany. I mentioned this here at the outset of a series on Jeremiah is because Yirmiyahu, the prophet Jeremiah, he sees violence coming, but it's not precipitated by another nation, though another nation is bringing it, but it's precipitated by the sins of the people. It is a tough story to tell. I think of a story John Steinbeck, you might recall a classic English writer wrote a book, The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, there was a series about that, a television program, I should say. And it harks to, actually his wife came up with the term to speak of fermenting discontent. It's voiced in the battle hymn of the Republic where God is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Uh, in the battle hymn, of course, we live at a time where there was political intrigue and fomented into war. And the grapes of wrath speak of that growing discontent. Jeremiah wasn't game to use that term, but he saw a pot boiling over. If you can think of soldiers scaling a wall and oil being poured down, this hot destruction. Oh goodness, the prophet saw it, which is why he wasn't so keen to even be a prophet. Noted in the Hebrew, I'll read it in uh, chapter 1, verse 5. V'hik dash t'kob, the Lord says, I've appointed you, or I've given you to this particular task. Novi l'gayim, that is to be a prophet, a voice to the nations. Nitati kob, and he says, I have appointed you. Many would be thrilled by that. You know, if you've ever been to an ordination service for people going into the ministry, it tends to be a rather exciting time for those that are beckoned to give voice to the good news. The problem here, while there is good news, the good news is over the horizon. What's at the forefront indeed is bad news. And he saw it. He knew the dogs of war were going to be unleashed under the people of Judah. It happened over a century prior when the Assyrians invaded and sacked the northern kingdom. But as Jeremiah says elsewhere in the book, he says, Judah, the southern kingdom, was worse than her sister in the north, and she too has an appointment with judgment. Happily, Jeremiah found some help in the telling of it. We're told in chapter 36, and isn't it good to have a friend? Vayikra Yirmiyahu, and Jeremiah called et Baruch, to Baruch, Bain Niryah. He found a friend, someone to help him in the telling of the story. And while Jeremiah was a speaking prophet, Baruch, commended it to writing. We're going to look at his world. We're going to look at the word that's delivered in that world. We're going to see dark times to be sure, but happily we're going to see hope over the horizon. Oh, I am אני באבל, תמה? האם אין מרפא בגלעד? 
אין רופא? האם אין מרפא לפצענו? מדוע? He's referred to as the lonely prophet because he was told not to marry. He's referred to as the weeping prophet because he's very effusive. Uh, a number of times in the book he's weeping over his message because it was a tough story to tell. When I compare uh, Yermiahu, Jeremiah to other prophets, I think he had a weaker constitution than some. Uh, Isaiah, for example, Lord, here I am, send me. There's a little more verve, a little more willingness to go into it. But Yermiahu, Jeremiah went kicking and screaming. He didn't want the assignment. When Isaiah ministered, there still was an opportunity for things to turn around. But Yermiahu was a deathbed prophet. The sins of the nation had, uh, you know, had, had come full term. Like a baby about to be born, prophets had come, a number of them. The number of days, a number of ways had predicted bad things to come. They went unheeded. So what have we here? I'll tell you what we have. We hear a prophet in chapter eight, verse 21. He says, "Al Shaver, he says, "I hurt, but a me." Uh, for the daughter of my people, Hash Barti, I hurt, I'm seized. If you can just, uh, just pick up the feeling of the moment. I think many of us in our culture today similarly hurt. We're concerned. To be sure, in his day, Jeremiah was very cognizant of a culture that had veered off the The beaten path. He beckons them to return to the ancient ways, but they were recalcitrant. They weren't game to do it. And so too, it seems, we live in a world today, in our own culture, where there is a veering off path. And the leaders are principal in guiding it. And who were the leaders yesterday? Yermiahu, Jeremiah, goes after the kings. He goes after the powerful, prophets, priests. Who are the powerful in our culture today? Big corporations, media, political structures. I believe Jeremiah would be calling them out today. And you know what he'd say today? The same thing as he said yesterday. I hurt. What was resonating in Jeremiah's breast in his day resonates in the hearts and minds of many today. We hurt. We are concerned. We see a bad moon rising. This is indeed very true. It's not only true today, it's true to Jeremiah's day. And in this series, we're game to explore the relationships. But I should say as well that not only do we see that bad moon rising, we see in the forefront difficulties, just like Jeremiah did. But the book of Jeremiah is checkered. It's salted in different spaces and different places. with word of a good thing to come, of a turnaround. And finally, there's not just a verse or two, but there's a whole section that speaks about a new covenant, a new way, and a new day. In addition to speaking about what's at the forefront, that is to say, I hurt. In this series, we're going to look at what's over the horizon, and that is hope and healing. Something that Jeremiah saw in his day and something we're minded to bring to you as we consider his world and our very own as we look at Yermiahu, the prophet, and consider the hope over the horizon.
Show your support for Israel with the Pro-Israel Package. In it, you will receive a three foot by five foot flag of Israel, four Pro-Israel buttons, a Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem bumper sticker, the Israel's Right to the Land booklet, the Broken Branches book by Zola Levitt, a two flag lapel pin, the Pilgrim's Map of the Holy Land, and two Stand with Israel koozies. Contact us and ask for the Pro-Israel Package. We're so thankful that you are watching us today. I know many watch on their televisions, but we are also all over social media. We have extra interviews, extra insights. There are programs that we put out on social media. Find us, easy to find, at Our Jewish Roots, and we will see you there. Yes, it's all about raising awareness. Uh, there are so many issues in the world today that we think uh, we do well to interpret through a biblical lens. In order to raise awareness, I'd like to speak to you because we need to raise funds to help raise awareness. We're not looking to raise our standards of living personally in, in petitioning you to get behind us and support us. The us is less the persons. I want you to know that, and I mean it sincerely. But uh, it's to raise awareness. We live in interesting times. And as we lean in on this series, we're going to see how Jeremiah's ancient word is very much a word for our own world. Oh, we're going to get the word out all right through television, through social media, particularly there to reach the young, though not exclusively the young. I want to ask you, please be gracious and help us to do so. And I believe God will bless you in so doing. We not only raise awareness, we bring to your attention people you wouldn't otherwise know. Uh, Dr. Michael Brown is coming to us in this series. He's a personal friend of mine. When I say doctor, an earned uh, PhD, an uh, expert in s s 11 dead languages, an interesting guy. Oh, he can help you take a look at the book, Penetrating Insights into Biblical Hebrew and Aramaic, and he's going to help us bring Jeremiah's world and word to you. You know what's fascinating about Jeremiah? He receives this intense calling from God. And as best as we can tell, he's, he's just a teenager. And, and later on in the 20th chapter, he, he says, God, you deceive me. You overpowered me. Those same Hebrew verbs, if they were used in another context, could talk about someone being raped and sexually abused. That's how he felt spiritually. God, you took advantage of me. I was just a kid. Yeah, you told me that everybody would be against me, but I had no idea what it would really mean. And you said, I'm gonna be a prophet to the nations. He, he felt as if God set him up and enticed him and lured him in and he was deceived. That was in a moment of great brokenness and pain. But, but here's the remarkable thing. Jeremiah never once backed down in public. He never once compromised his message. Despite the agony, despite the pain, despite the conflict of having to bring negative, destructive words for decades, and think of it, you don't want them to come to pass because that would be terrible, but you want them to come to pass because you legitimately heard from God. It's this agony, this tension that he lived with, but in all of it, remarkably, because of his intimacy with God, because of his love for God and his love for his people, he never backed down. He never compromised. So you get some of these chapters, the glimpses behind the scene, the agony of the prophet, the valleys, but also the mountaintops because he met with God, he knew God, he had to be faithful to God. And that's why God can take this young man, just a na'ar, just a youth, and use him as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah saw that judgment was coming in the form of Babylonia to come and execute God's 
wrath. He beckoned individuals to turn to the Lord. They had another idea. Let's turn to Egypt instead to help us against the Babylonians. That was their stimulus package. Well, we don't need to make a religious issue out of it. There are political troubles of the day, and we just need to do this or that. What's the this and the that today? Let's print more money. Let's get rid of the police. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do that. This will help us. This is the cure that we need. Never mind going back to the values that made this country what it is. Let's revise all that and do something new. That was the mood of the day. And into that mood, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, he sees the seething pot, judgment coming. And in verse 14, Vayomer Adonai Elov, and the Lord said to me, Mitzaphon, from the north, Tipotach hara alkol yeshvei haaretz. From the north, he says, evil will break forth on the inhabitants of this land. Now, to be sure, that wasn't a popular message. The word of the prophet isn't popular, but it is profitable if it will be heated. Unfortunately, in Jeremiah's day, it wasn't, and judgment was forthcoming. That was his day. That was his world. We live in our day, and we have our world. Will we heed? Will we turn to the Lord? If we do, as Jeremiah said, we can find hope over the horizon. Jeremiah was a young priest. All seemed to be going well for him. And all of a sudden he was called to be a prophet and didn't really want the job. And I say, who, who would, you know? God has a way of interrupting people's lives, doesn't he? It, that, and this is a perfect example. I think he was fine. We get to a place in life like, we're fine, we're good. We don't need to ruffle any feathers. And my goodness, the call on Jeremiah's life, he was to ruffle everyone's feathers. Yeah, I think it was a tough world and a sensitive soul as he is, evidenced in the literature. He was indeed aware of it. But it's one thing to be aware of a problem and then to be called to confront people with it. Then in the eyes of others, you become the problem. And he had to absorb a lot of tension that a lot of people would rather not. He, he didn't, to me, part of the, mm, should I say sad thing, is that he was also told he couldn't marry. He, he didn't have that support back at home. And we've been married 32 years. You are my support. When I'm going through something, I can talk to you. We can work it out together. And here's Jeremiah. That, to me, that's, that's rough. I, I just, I, I, I wouldn't personally want to be without a woman. And, uh, you know, I was married 30 years, and my first wife went on to be with the Lord. And then the Lord was gracious enough to grace me with, with another, Barry. And, and I just wouldn't want life without. Uh, Barry, you know, I'm like a kite, and she's the tail that keeps me steady in the sky. And, uh, but it wasn't just Jeremiah's word. His life was an object lesson because the world was going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. Why bother bringing children into it? There was a point behind that. He's testifying to the fact that there's a bad moon rising and, uh, and, and he suffered uh, for the sake of the message. It's interesting that you mentioned that you're the kite and, and buries your tail. I guess God was to be his tail, God was to be his support, God was to be his comforter. Right, and it's just because I don't think I could live without Barry, and I can't. In fact, right now as we speak, she's actually landing in Israel. She has a ministry work that she does there. And I told her, 
uh, before she goes, how uh, the same thing about, uh, I'm just gonna miss her, I need her in my world. And she was like, well, don't worry, we can FaceTime back and forth, <laughs> and we're texting while she's on the airplane. I, I, I just so need her, I, I don't know what I do, but the reality is, if I had to do without her, we do have an able God, that's your point. Mm -hmm. Quite a roller coaster ride that he was on, some good times in his life, but so much that he had to endure, um, thrown in a pit and yeah. just so much. We know more about that man's personal life uh, than any other uh, prophet in the Older Testament because there's a lot of self-disclosure. And I get into that when we examine him. He gives voice to it, uh, his own experience amidst the, the, the moments that he finds himself in. And he carried a burden but he also carried hope. And I love that as the extremes in the book and in his life, in his message. To that point, and that's the difference between someone with biblical vision. A lot of people, you know, carry burdens in this world. It's just a tough world. But while we do have the burden, we have more than a burden. What a great point uh, to go out on, by the way. There is a hope. Yes. There is hope. Indeed and Jeremiah brings is. that. Well, this is the first one in our series. We hope that all of you come back. Dr. Seif has good words. Dr. Michael Brown has great insight. And we look forward to more programs in this series. And you both have something going for you, too. But we're out of time. Hope to see you again. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store, there, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you.